Yep, you're on? Yep. Super. So, um, thank you all for coming. This is the first talk that we're hosting in 2019 at Gallery AWA uh, in a collaboration with the International Light Association. Um, who, uh, through them, we have uh, two amazing speakers that are, have joined us today. Uh, Rasmus uh, Bogdhausen, uh, who's visiting from Austria, um, you know, here for other conferences, and we stole him away for an evening uh, so that he can come and share his knowledge on heart rate variability um, and about the work that he does, which is uh, Sound of the Soul uh, through Aqua Quinta. He's uh, a multifaceted personality. I've known him for a few years now. We've spoken at uh, at least one conference together. And um, uh, he's also the co-president of the International Light Association with uh, Gabriel, who's also based in Austria. And um, like you're saying, multifaceted background, landscape architecture, uh, you know, water studies under uh, Professor Emoto. Right, for many years in Japan, and uh, he's a prolific uh, conference speaker, and his research is, uh, will blow you away. Uh, so uh, we'll start with uh, Rasmus, and then we have uh, the amazing Kim Chi Moyer, uh, who uh, has recently uh, moved uh, to New York uh, from Santa Rosa, California. She's a world-renowned bioenergy uh, expert, uh, basically she works with electric fields um, with the human body and um, we have uh, been introduced to Kim Chi through Rasmus and through the International Light Association um, and we are really, really honored to have you here Kim Chi, yeah, really. And uh, she's a wonderful person, her research is amazing, she's tested it on me as well, her results were uh, they were fun, yeah? And um, she's also uh, connected with, um, uh, she's the ambassador for uh, the Gross Happiness Index, um, which uh, originates in Bhutan, as several of you will know. And uh, there's another thing that you're doing uh, with the Gross Happiness Index. And we just founded the organization Gross National Happiness Center in America as well, along yes. with Yes. Fantastic. So she just founded, as you heard, the Gross National Happiness Center here in the United States. So um, you can go to uh, her website uh, for more information, or after after the talk, you can definitely, uh, we're all going to be here drinking some wine and talking. So uh, at that time, you can get more information from her. So uh, thank you very much, both of you, for coming. The way we have structured it is that we will do about a half hour for each speaker, then we take a break for a few, uh, you know, five, ten minutes, and then we can do demos and, uh, you know, more of a Q&A, yeah? Uh, stay as long as you like. You know, we're open to breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you all for coming. And over to you, Rasmus. So, thank you very much for the introduction. Well, a high toll already, yes, I work now since also three, four, five, six, seven months for the ILA, International Light Association, it's an association worldwide operating with healers, architects, scientists, all kinds of areas working with light. And we're very happy that we can integrate architecture, which I think is very important in healing, because that all surrounds us, makes us sick or makes us healthy. So I think the architects have quite a responsibility too in light. Well, my background is ecology, landscape architecture, and water chemistry. That's my background. Um, yeah, that's about the ILA. There are many different people working there. Um, Arpai and me, we're both, both on the board, and we try now a young group of new people in that group to do new things there. Yes. Well, my work here, I want to show you today is what I launched in 2011 is a technology which translates the heart frequency into light and sound. It's a technology I thought probably nobody would be interested in that. Now it's already in 25 countries and I'm traveling almost too much already. So I'm going everywhere. I've just been in Japan, I've been in Poland. So it goes just, um, books just my flight to Australia. So I'm pretty busy at the moment. Okay. How did that come? Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about heart rate variability. Well, this up he gave me half an hour, 
last lecture in Switzerland was planned two hours, it took six hours. So I will just come faster. Um, no, but I will show you just a brief overview. Um, on this paper you see a light which we have developed. This light translates my voice into sound, into light, based on 432 hertz. Free of pulsation. The normal LED light is pulsating like a mobile phone. Um, your heart rate variability, we know the more variable your heartbeat, the better for you. The more similar your heartbeat gets, the more symptoms we have. You know about heart rate variability? You heard about that? If you don't have, start Googling it tomorrow, it's your bank account in health when you get retired. When you have a heart rate variability which is like that, don't wonder, many people when they get retired, they get their first heart attack or stroke or whatever. The pathetic state protects them, and when the person pathetic starts to grow again, which means the relaxation, the healing process starts, many symptoms appear. Well, I will talk very short about this gentleman. You know this guy, Emoto? Masaru Emoto is world famous. He wrote this book, Messages from Water. I was very fortunate. I met him about 20 years ago in Austria. He invited me to Japan. I went to Japan, I opened late in his laboratory, and I traveled with this gentleman 11 years around the world. And I got stuck for 33 years in Russia. Russia is an amazing country in terms of many things are not so nice. Business-wise, I got cheated up and down. But um, in terms of science, new approaches, new holistic thinking, it's an amazing country. So I got stuck there almost four years, I went back and forward and worked at that in Russia. I opened the laboratory for a motor, I made a lot of work with these water crystals. I'm not going into this lecture into that, there are many lectures on YouTube if you want to see that. And I've, I've been invited in 40 countries already giving lectures, so you can find this information in the website if you want. But one thing very important for me is, you are two-third water. And when you are exposed to a vibration, you react on this vibration. And your body, you know, when you hear a beautiful, nice sound, you become happy. If you hear techno music, you want to get you get very aggressive or very stimulated and not in a calm state. But very interesting is this is for example from Hopi Indians, the water crystal. And what every culture has, every society around this world, they distinguish between holy waters and normal waters. No matter if it's in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca, you have a holy spring. The Native American have had holy water. In Tibet, you have holy water. The Austrians have had holy water. I went several times to Africa. Every village has, or at least every community has holy water. The word holy derives from healing, and if you don't understand it, you could make a nice school or a belief around it. If I look under the microscope, I can see the water. This is just a water, frozen water drop. And if it has a nice structure, it's a quality behind it. I have to jump over this because that's not the topic of my talk. I just want to tell you a little bit of the background. I worked for a motor many years, a different motor, and then I started to work with wire vibration, and I was invited by a wonderful architect in Cairo. His name is Ibrahim Karim, maybe you know him. Wonderful gentleman, Alpine knows him too. And he told me if you want to understand quality, vibration, you have to study motor core. This is just a string. An interesting thing is if you pull the string, you can get certain laws. And one law is the law of resonance. So if you have a tuning fork and you hit one, what happens with the other one? One. The other one wasn't touched. It just distinguished the first one. It resonates. That's just a simple law of resonance. So when you have a tuning fork, when you hit this tuning fork, the other one not touched will resonate. The other one which has another tuning won't resonate. But if the other one is the same tuning, just one of half higher, you know, the piano, you do, 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 they resonate. And this is an amazing law all around the universe. These are muscle cells. If you make a fist and you shake because you're angry or you're freezing, you shake between 8 and 12 hertz. 
Our Mother Earth vibrates between 8 and 12 hertz. Mm -hmm. So Mother Earth is vibrating, our tune, our body cells <coughs> are vibrating. We are changing our pH and cellular level, proven now by many scientists. Most, most famous is Pollock in the States, Terra Pollock, Nadia Volkov in Russia. So we do not get the energy from the pizza I ate 40 minutes ago. We get energy from the resonance. Our heart pumps about 5 till 20,000 liters blood a day, depending what you're doing. And to pump 5,000 liters from one barrel to another, we need already 2,000 carbohydrates. So we cannot eat as much as we need to grow, to digest, to think, to move. It won't. So we need another source of energy. So the interesting thing is when you have a tuning fork, you hit it, every octave will vibrate. So you can make an experience by yourself. You all, maybe, some of you are architects, or many of you are architects, I know. The interesting thing is that even a shape makes a sound, but I'm coming to this in a second. But if you have a string, let's say in a piano, you know a piano has strings, and if you hit the door, you can try it at home if you have the piano. You open the lid, you press the pedal, then the strings are moving freely. You hit the door, you go with your fingernails over all the strings, you will see that every other door is vibrating on your fingernail, without you having touched it. And the mathematical sign for infinity is the name A, no? which means that this information, 256 hertz from this vibration, is the same like this here, it's just the double, 512. The next one, 500,024, uh, which means information is not related to, sound, to size. If you read the letter A, very small in your book, and big on a screen on the wall, or on a commercial, you won't read more A. It's the same information. That's what Hahnemann did with homopathy. You know homopathy? Homopathy is you take your substance, you dilute it until it's gone, and then you charge money for it. Can you tell you that's homopathy? But the interesting thing is, Hahnemann, 200 years ago, he diluted just in octaves and fifths. He took the vibration out of the plant. This is a law, so you can take a vibration and continue with that. Why I'm telling you all this? There is another thing. It's the secret of the fifth. You saw it say in English, the quint essence. You know this expression? Mm -hmm. Why it's the quint essence and not the octave essence or the fourth or the fifth or the, the the, 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 whatever it is, it's the fifth essence. Because if you take a string, you divide it into three parts, and you let two parts vibrate, you hear the fifth. We are two-third water, we have five fingers, and the holy symbol of the woman in all cultures in ancient times was the pentagram. In the United States it's the pentagon. They use it for other terms maybe. But the fifth, the in homopathy, the LM potency, the 1 to 5, is the strongest illusion. And in music therapy, the Indian yogi is playing the fifths. <coughs> Mozart adds in the fifths. The blues opens in the fifths. The fifth interval is that what we body, our body, respond the most. Every music therapist in the world works mainly with the fifths. So let's go further. A shape makes a sound, you're architects. And we have, we have lost this information. If you study architecture, you, you hear anything about sound? That your house has a sound? Probably not. I haven't heard about this in my study. Maybe. This circle has 360 degrees. If I say 360 degrees is equal to 360 hertz, like vibration. I can hear the sound. What's the sound of the circle? The pentagram has 180 degrees times 5, 540. That's the next sound. Which means a circle and a square both have 360 degrees. Are related to the pentagram in the interval of the fifth. So a circle and the pentagram would sound like this. It's a harmonic fifth. Like we have in classical music. We are two square water, we have five fingers, that's our vibration. Let's take a shape. You know the Egypts, they built a pyramid. They didn't build the pyramid to bury some stupid pharaohs. For sure not. That's our books tell. But I don't believe this works. That's 99% pure silicium. This one is the same, just a little less 
smaller, the smaller, of course, the higher the pitch. This one is exactly the same material. That's how it sounds. That's how we build our houses today. That's how they sound. Maybe a little provocative. Sorry, that's my way of moving. And this doesn't sound either. Now the interesting thing is you can calculate vibration into different vibration windows. In mathematics, everything starts by one, no? One universe, one. If I say this is one string, one guitar string, and I divide it by two, I hear exactly the octave. These are all octaves, one, two, four, eight, six, and 32, 64, 128, 256, and I reach the sound do. And if I continue, and all this here are the fifths. And these are the most harmonical scale to calculate music. There are many different kinds of scales we have for music. But this is the most harmonic one. We have here a, a la, la, in German it's a, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, 432 hertz. You heard about that? Our music nowadays is tuned in 440 hertz. They changed this in the 30s. It's not the normal sound la. But if I keep on doubling, doubling, doubling all the way further and further, that's just a calculation process. And I keep on calculating, 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 just from the number one, I suddenly reach in trillion hertz area. In trillion hertz area, I reach the light spectrum. In the Indian chakra, you know all chakras, I hope. Yes, root yes. chakra, crown chakra. What chakra has the heart? Wait, which color? Green. Why is green not red? The heart is red, no? Why is green? Have they been drunk? <laughs> the Indians have been the most amazing mathematicians. I cannot imagine how they knew a thousand years ago that the heart is green. Because if I take the number one, much, much more to the left, it gets green. So that it starts from the heart, and the heart is green. So we can calculate different frequency ranges. It's just a little background what I'm doing. So when we play music, we actually play color. And <coughs> these are the chakras, beautifully, and you can directly relate here to see this and all the different notes. Okay. This is a light I developed. I didn't bring it because it's this size, full of water. And we have developed a light like this here on the table, which is free of any pulsation. Which means if I put an oscilloscope to it, this is a cheap LED like probably everybody uses. Like every this lamp up there, the other lamp I have there, everywhere. This is LED. And LED looks in the oscilloscope like somebody close to a heart attack. It's always repeating. Like the, like the mobile phone. The mobile phone is not bad or good. The mobile phone is a pulsed wave. Now we have something, it's called heart rate variability. So watch my time, I try to make it short. Heart rate variability means that you have you know, two heartbeats in your life which are the same. The more variable one heartbeat to the next is, the better you adapt to stress. The more you focus the more you are in stress, the more sugar you eat, the more, let's say, bad your life can is, the more similar your heart beats become. Cause of death in our society, what is it? It's cardiovascular problems, mainly the heart attack and the stroke. There are societies on this planet, not many left, but in the Kashmir, some parts, South America and India, there is, there's no heart attack. But here every second almost suffers sooner or later from a heart attack. So we are a society, we are so stressed, and the light has a very important impact. And I hope in the future that architects will take care of this. Because we are exposed to light all the time. A farmer in, don't know, in Vietnam, or wherever in India, or wherever, being out in the rice field, I don't know, 10 hours a day, he does not have to worry about light. But we here in our society, sitting in our dark little room, exposed to light, if you're exposed to a pulsation of light, we stress our body. And this has to be developed and this has to be improved in the future. 
It's not only about the light spectrum. In Corpus, of course, the sun has a huge spectrum, and we know different light sources have hardly any good spectrum. Ever. This is the light we have developed. This is an oscilloscope. It's completely calm. It's not frozen anymore. This is the same light I have here on the table. OK. So what we are doing now here, and after the break, I will show it to you in detail. Based on the law of resonance, which means one tuning fork, and all the other tuning forks, at least if they are in the row of the octaves, or the fifths, they start to vibrate by the side, like the piano. So now, our heart beats between, not beats, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic activity we measure between 0 and 0 0.4 hertz. Yes, that's the area we measure the autonomic nervous system. The area you can hear is about 20 to 20,000 hertz. Of course, you don't hear 20,000 hertz and 20 you hardly hear, but that's, let's say, the, the upper note. The light we can see is about 400 to 800 trillion hertz. So imagine your heart is a tuning fork. It vibrates, no? Mm -hmm. It sends a vibration out. Mm -hmm. And another tuning fork would say, hey, I'm exactly the same, just many, many octaves higher. Mm -hmm. And another tuning fork would say, hey, I'm the same too, just even many, many more. So what we are doing is we mm -hmm. take, like an electrocardiograph, your electric impulse, I will have to the brain connect somebody, and we will live see the person's heart rate variability, we will live hear the person's sound, and we will live see the person's light. And I think it's a matter of time that you will make your individual life at home. I may be just a crazy pioneer here. Yes? That's fine for me. Um, for me, the, the approach, well, let's go to electrocardiograph very fast. You all know electrocardiograph, ACG, no? And ACG, maybe some of you have made one. I made three in my life. I'm curious, of course, and I train a little. An ACG can only, an AKG can only show the damage of the conductive tissue, which means you can go to a doctor and the doctor says, well, you're doing fine, and maybe next day you anyway have a heart attack. So just 30% of the heart attack, if, maybe not even that, sorry, can be somehow predicted by an AKG. An AKG, this guy got the Nobel, uh, uh, got the Nobel Prize, uh, Amazing Dutch guy, this was the first AKG 100 years ago, three containers of water measuring this. Nowadays we can make it very small. And we measure the, 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 the frequency going through the heart, and we can see if this part is not good, we can see this area of the heart has a problem. That's AKG every doctor has, or most doctors have. There's something else, it's called the heart rate variability. And that's something you have, and you have, you have to do nothing for what you want. But it's your own responsibility. Heart rate variability means I measure from one heartbeat to the next the time distance. And now the interesting thing is from one beat to the next to the third to the fourth to the fifth and so on, it's always different. And the more different it is, the better. The more similar it is, the closer you to a heart attack. The closer it is to normal pulsation of an LED light, the closer you are from to whatever symptom you want to have or to the heart attack. But this knowledge is not new. This knowledge is known 1,700 years ago. This guy here from China, his name is uh, Fang Shui, he said if the raindrops, the, the heartbeat becomes as similar as the raindrop on the roof, but just the same, the patient is dying in a few days. Nowadays we know if the heart rate variability goes down to zero, the heart burns out later after three days. Okay, so HRV in detail, sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. This is how you show it on a plot. We will see this later. We know the sympathetic activity that's typical for our society being in our brain, being in focus, eating a lot of sugar, having stress. This causes that the heart is more and more similar, increases the heart activity, increases the blood pressure, and so on. The parasympathetic is when you breathe out and you let go when you start to that chest. It's called the high frequency here. When the nervous nerve vagus, the tense nerves of the brain stem, can work properly in the body, that's where you relax and actually where the healing takes place. And we know today the better the HRV, 
23,000 studies are on the market today. Nevertheless, a doctor studying medicine in Vienna has so many hours HRV during the study because we are a society specialized on symptoms, not on health. We have 44,000 defined diseases in our planet and we have one health. Good. One topic which I like very much is the interaction of the brain to the heart. And there's also direct relation of the brain, of the eyes. If I look on my finger, I cannot watch your focus on your eyes. So either I watch here or I focus on you. The same is with our thought. No matter if you're thinking whatever, Arabic language or German language or English language, you cannot say 2 plus 2 is 4 and tonight let's go out and let's go dancing. You can do just one thought by the next. Yes? Is that true? Try to have two thoughts at the same time. You will be the first one. Now the interesting thing is the moment you focus with the brain, your heart rate variability decreases. And we are a bring it to the point society. We train our children, bring it to the point, bring it to the point, and we lose all our intuition, all our presence, being in the now. The thinker cannot say to the thoughts, stop thinking. So, let's jump a little bit over because I have so many things to show you. 2011, I launched a technology, I call it Sound of Soul. Sounds maybe a little bit spiritual. But actually, it's just a direct translation of the heart rate variability into light and into sound. I can connect nowadays a person and I could enlighten the entire building of the frequency of your heart. An entire soccer stadium. Just translate it. Very simple. I, and now the beauty is, because you're not a robot, you always have different, you have variability. And now, based on the law of resonance, your heart picks the, the notes. So you play ongoing your own sound of life. And if I translate it further, you can encounter yourself not only in sound, you can encounter yourself in light. I launched this technology in 2011. I thought nobody would be interested in that. I'm now in 25 countries. Architect, I have nobody yet. But I have, I have from I don't know, from a cancer clinic, to a fertility clinic, to a dentist, to a complementary dealers, to a maternity ward. I have two hospitals making studies now during heart operation. People are interested in that. Mm -hmm. our, because our medicine got to a point where we see that our allopathic medicine hardly gets further. Three per statistics say, I don't know if they're true, but they say that chemotherapy only has a success of 3%. That's amazing. We put so much money into that. One chemo person, chemo patient costs about 200,000 a year. That's a good income. Right? But maybe there are different things. But I'm not saying that with this technology is healing anybody. I just want to translate your heart frequency into sound and light. And I can see how you get in a step of relaxation. And healing takes place. No matter if you take homeopathics or antibiotics or chemotherapy. I have <coughs> oncology central workers with me, so they should do what they do. It's all fine. But the better the variability, the better for the body. That's what we are doing. This little detail, I can divide the spectrum into subparts, which means you can play several instruments. And the beauty is, what connects two people is the heart. What disconnects us is the brain. And this is not only esoteric, no, it's pure physics. I'll show you a bit later. This is a 40-year-old lady from, from Britain, came into my office. That's her heart, just playing the sound of the heart. She plays it, I didn't compose it. We do this later, I have a year here at home, otherwise I can like myself. That's the same lady, she plays wildly in the field. Her, the, all the notes have been recorded by a musician, and her heart, of course we use technology, chooses the notes. And I don't have the light here, but I can actually also show the light of the person who is gone, because we record the light. My grandmother died two weeks ago. I can bring her sound back and her light. It's just translation of the heart frequency because I record it. It's not that I do woo-woo. I don't know. I would, but I don't need this thing. 
It's just, it's just, you can listen to Elvis Presley and he's not here, isn't he? You think, well, I have a very good friend from Africa, he told me, he comes from Burkina Faso, he gave his mother 40 years ago a radio, after two hours listening to the radio, she poured water on all of this because she saw the little guy inside it, thirsty. Of course, we know today, there's no guy inside it. But what I'm telling you today, maybe you think I'm crazy too, but maybe your children will think, that's just normal. So, I mean, that's fine, I'll do This is the lady playing violin in the floor. And this is a guy, for example, in the United States, I went to a conference in Santa Fe area, I called it the heart attack conference, because most of the participants all had a heart attack already. One said I had three heart attacks, the other said what, three, I had seven already, it's not that competing here. And this guy told me, my heart tries to kill me. My music cannot sound nice because my heart is so bad, I have seven heart attacks. I said, wait, your heart is just in stress. You will always use your mind. He was eating donuts while we were talking. So I was saying, I'm, that's like, my house is burning and you put gasoline on it. I mean, that's not so smart. Anyways, I connected him after 10 minutes listening to his own heart. His heart was like that. So the heart wants to open. The heart wants to get variable. The heart wants to heal. I have unfortunately not the time to go so much in detail, but later we have a discussion. I can explain you anything you want. I have until I'll pay tomorrow morning. I have until Sunday actually. <coughs> then my plan goes. Okay. <coughs> As I said, when I launched in 2011, I thought nobody's interested. Now I can train, I don't know, so many amazing doctors and therapists all around. Now I have several people in the States working with it. Kimchi works with it here in the world. And we connected a girl in weight coma. You know, wait, coma, looking with open eyes, and you think, why is she not talking with me? She's in coma, in the state of coma, you say coma in the Connected with her mother, because I can connect two people. I can connect two people, and can hear how the two hearts become coherent, I can hear it. And I can see on the screen how the data changes, so I don't have to believe it. This girl connected, after a few min minutes of her pulse, Calmed completely down, half the pulse, and three days later she woke up. I mean, I don't say we woke her up because I don't know what healing is. Your body makes every second about 40 million body cells. How did you do it? I don't know how I do that. No doctor, no therapist, no kimchi, nobody has ever healed a person. We can go along with the person, give him the right treatment, help him, but on cellular level, we have to heal ourselves. I don't know, nobody knows how actually it's done. Anyway, but if we know how to approach or maybe support the self healing process of the body, we can do something. Why do we hear different music? Because everybody's individual, of course. And the beauty is, we think normally in terms of good and bad, which means the young, sexy lady or a handsome guy will play beautifully and this old, sick person will play bad. That's wrong. The moment the person gets present, which means it's able, like a metronome, to resonate with the surrounding, he plays or she plays beautiful. That's amazing. That's what we're doing. Here at the very end, before I give the hand to Kimchi, I want to show you something I've shown all the world around, and I, but I touch every time anyway. It's the connection of a mom with the child. And before I show this, I want to explain you one another amazing um, Dutch guy. There are many very interesting Dutch guys in this area some hundred years ago. It's Christian Huygens. He could show us the first one mathematically why one metronome and the other metronome during time becomes entrained. They don't quite become the same because synchronicity doesn't exist in the universe. You will never become me, but we are quite alike, which means the vibration interacts. Like when I dance with my wife, she reacts on me and I react on her. So he could show that this they interact mathematically. That's a very nice experiment you can show here. <coughs> you have metrics. These are like five people. Five people. They have all their point of view. And they can hardly vibrate each other because they all have quite rigid. 
is their belief or their whatever, or they think is right and wrong. If I loosen their point of view or let them dance together, like this five metronomes, coherence can take place. This second here from the left is the sick guy, he needs five minutes. He can wait five minutes, but let's jump over. So I connect two people, and now we think maybe the sick person and the healthy person, the sick person will maybe empty the healthy person. Like when you have a full glass of water, I have an empty one, you have to give me a little bit, and I have a little, and you have less. This is in terms of matter, it's like this, but not in terms of vibration. I'll always explain it like this. When you're a dance teacher and I'm your student, just because I can't dance, are you going to be a bad dance teacher? No. You grow by the challenge to teach me this stuff, and I grow as a, as a student, which means in vibrational terms, vibration always orientates itself in the higher order, which means the healthy person and sick person both become even better. That's the amazing part. So this here to the very end, I uh, give the, uh, the word to kimchi. The mother plays the viola, the daughter plays the, the, the violin. It's a live recording, it's not edited or whatever in the sound studio. And related to Emoto, very short. If you know Emoto, I worked with him a long time. I couldn't make a nice water crystal of everybody. But if I took the heart frequency, just the heart frequency, not any medication, just recorded heart frequency, played to the water, I get beautiful crystals. So you hear how these two people play, and it's not as I said, composed. Start working with this, you can hear how the two hearts interact. That's beautiful. I have a lady in Switzerland, she just makes couple therapy. You fall in love with your partner probably many years ago, not because of your head, because you were dancing or having fun or whatever. And then 10 years later, you got separated because the brain separates the person. I'm married 20 years. After 20 years, you can say you know everything about each other, but I can say my wife has not two heartbeats in her life which are the same which means I have every second a new life. So the liveliness you can translate, and that's the beauty. And, well, let's see if my computer rings. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, launched 2011, it's now in 25 countries, it's a little old slide, sorry for that. And this is a maternity work in Italy, women connected to that during labor, when the womb was four centimeters open, and the opening phase, one third of the women fell asleep and the pain was reduced by 70%. This is a cancer clinic in Brazil. This is in Italy, another big hospital, now we have two. During heart surgery, the patients are laying this to their own sound. And the, the, the surgeon says it's amazing. The operation is so different. Because if you're like this, or if you like that, it's different. That's one of the biggest psychiatric clinics in Europe. It's in Eastern Switzerland. There are 770 people working. They have four departments for this system now. In the States now we have five people working there. Um, this is a five-star spa in Austria working there. And the beauty is you can connect not only humans, I can connect also the dog. And the dog doesn't understand nothing what I'm doing. This tool, after three minutes, they were both snoring on the floor. <laughs> yes. So this is what I'm doing, and I want actually to show with this work that the Palestine, the Jewish, or the black, or the white, or the stupid, and the more stupid, in the head we separate, by the heart we get coherent. And we cannot solve the problems on our planet by the brain. Einstein said, we cannot solve the problem by the approach which has caused it. Mm -hmm. And it has caused by the brain. And well, maybe it's strange I'm just giving lecture here <coughs> by architects, but I mean architects, if I go here, I, I just went out Penn Station some days ago, and I saw the new uh, the Empire State Building with all the colors. I said, imagine if you make, everybody go there and the entire Empire State Building would show my color, just for three seconds. 
wouldn't that be an awesome whatever uh, gadget just to be aware and just a whole building to, to show I have here a tool I can show later with two electrodes I can measure how you react on light I can see which light is the strongest for you now based on the conductivity of the skin you cannot manipulate this by the brain so there are many things going on and I have another tool we could screw every light bulb a bulb uh, for example from Philips which we connect and we could make the entire house by your heartbeat changing or by your respiratory sinus or breathing. We also developed this. Wonderful. So I will change the presentation now to finish this. I hope I find this one. And it's kimchi. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So kimchi. Yes. I met in 2011 um, in Germany, Baden Baden, and um, we started to have uh, uh, to work together because he was always talking about resonance, and I always talked about resonance as well. And so um, we started to begin to work together, and he made my job easy because he started to go into the science, explain it, and where me, uh, whereas I'm just applying into what does the body, how does the body perceive um, the, the information we are receive. So I have a passion. In, um, in, in really helping people because I grew up in a war country. Um, so I, I, li I always like to start um, with uh, this, um, this slide. The day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, uh, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. So my journey start um, when I left the country in 75 and I get to see what's going on in humanity and I really want to do something about it. I'm fascinated about the people and I want to see what can I do to help people um, um, uh, feel better. Uh, I got into, uh, I came to this country and I got into Georgetown and then uh, when I graduated, Georgetown put me um, to work at the refugee camp where I was managing 14,000 refugees a month, 120,000 a year. And so through that, I get to see what's going on, people, how much people are suffering, and I, want, I really want to do something about that. And so, they, so I went back to Georgetown, and they recommended that I should become a doctor or a nurse. Um, knowing my character, I know I don't take order very well. I would make a very bad nurse. So I had to find another way to, um, to help people. So I went into acupuncture school, and I still was not satisfied with being an acupuncturist. Um, taking, I was checking the pulse, looking at the tongue. I tried to decode the body different ways. Um, I look at fingerprinting. I look at graphology. So I study every, as much as, as possible, but I was still not satisfied with, with the method. So then I got my way to Germany in 1991 and um, came to Vega Company, which made this device here. Um, the, um, Right here, this is where I was trained in, uh, in Schirkach, Germany. This is a medical department. So Vega company uh, produced, developed, and manufactured sensors for the measurement of level, point level, and pressure. Also, all kind of equipment and software to make all kind of measurement with the highest reliability in, uh, in every application. So that got my attention. Um, so while I was at Vega, I got to meet a lot of biophysicists. So I started to spend time with them and they began to train me. And here, Dr. Ludwig started to talk to me about the, uh, between the Earth um, ionosphere and the Earth itself, there exist different frequencies. And here there's also human frequencies where we vibrate. Um, uh, where we vibrate uh, in harmony and it matches the brain frequency. Uh, I got to spend some time also with uh, Fritz Pop. I don't know if you know about Fritz Pop. Um, he is the one that coined the term biophoton. And Fritz Pop, um, I got to spend some time with him where um, in the lab, 
Uh, Fritz Bob is the one that say that in every, uh, in all the cell, it contains an energetic structure as well. There is an ideal resonant frequency of vibration. So I got to go into this lab where you would sit and in the dark chamber, and I would see myself emitting light, you, the different photon, and you could measure that. For example, you could put a tomato into um, into a, a chamber. And you can compare the organic tomato and non-organic tomato, how much photon is emitting, and based on the amount of photon emission, light emission, we can calculate how healthy a, a, a substance is. Um, and another person that who is my mentor is Dr. Bodo Kohler, who uh, talk about, he, uh, we consider him like the Pope of energy medicine. Um, he emphasized the fact that living system is energy, matter, and information. Reality is all fields. All living system are controlled by a, by a bioelectronic field of energy and information to which all material process, all chemical process are subordinate. So what I did is I began to apply this, and I want to see can I apply this into a reality? How can I apply this knowing that the body is one billion times more energy than material? Can I translate that into a result every day? So I start to ask the question, what if we can have a technology that communicate with the body? What if I can tap into your body and begin to get information out of the body? Because right now, as a, 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 when we go to a practitioner, we, um, we, we say we have a headache, and we don't feel good, we have, uh, we have low energy. Practitioner would then give us, make us a, a, a recommendation, whether you take a Tylenol or take an enzyme or a supplement, but how do we know if the body is ready for that or not? What if we can have a way to let the body uh, tell us what it wants? What if the body has a voice to express itself? So I begin to look into the technology. Can I communicate with the body? So I developed a method called resonopathy using resonance uh, and my feedback technology to gather data by measuring the body electrical field. So it is a yes-no system, that's it, using both resonance and galvanic skin response to solicit information. So here is a device. I me what I do is I measure here a point on the body. It could be on the fingers or the toe. Right? And here you can put in the substance. So a little demonstration in here quickly. For example, here you can hold on to electrode. The electrode is connected to the device and then you can measure. Right? You can measure because we are electricity. So you can measure any point on the body. And through that, I use it as a way to get the feedback. So um, since we don't have a lot of time, I'm going to go into case study to show can we really communicate with the body? Can we solve it? If it's so, can I solve problems? So all this wonderful technology that we have, I just want to know what does the body think about that? What does the body think of all these like amazing devices that we can uh, treat the body with, right? What does the body say to this when you do this? So I just want to know what does the body react to all of these, uh, all these uh, you know, wonderful supplements, does it really work uh, or not? So um, this is through a resonance, through a process of resonance. Resonance means when you insert a substance into circuit with the body, and the body will then react to it if it matches a cellular structure in the body. And all I do is I just record data all day long. Um, I spend the last many years, over 2,000 cases, working from a little baby infant to a 93 years old, that's my oldest client, and begin to um, to find out what's going on by asking different questions. What's going on? Where is it? How bad is the situation? What are the key remedies? If I can answer all these questions, I can pretty much solve a lot of um, the cases. So um, I look through to see how bad is the situation, where does it come from, what kind of toxin is in the, um, in the body, what type of deficiency, how is the metabolism, what the emotion the person feel like, how, what is the immune system, whether there's an allergy or not, and whether there's a degenerative process. Those are just a few, uh, a few uh, sample questions. So how to navigate to all the supplements when people come 
And people take all kinds of things. How do we know which one is right for the body? Right? So let, just me, let me just give you a few examples. Uh, again, I'm not a doctor. I'm just someone that just measures the body electrical field. And I just collect data all day long. So this is case number one. This, um, this is a child, one year old, who has no teeth coming out. So the mother brought him to me and say that the baby has no vaccination and he only staying home and eating everything organic. And he has no teeth, she doesn't understand why. I'm not a dentist, so I say, okay, all right, let's play, and let's figure it out. Um, I don't know, but let's just let, let take a look. So I take a look because it's just a one-year-old baby. There's no major intoxication, but I found there's an inherent intoxication that is in the left kidney due to a mercury intoxication. And so, um, the mom, then the, uh, so the only remedy, you can see all of this is nothing here. The only remedy the body would pick is a body detox patch, which is a patch you can just put on the foot. So the, it doesn't pick anything heavy. Heavy things like no DMSA, no chelation, no uh, Corella, zeolite, anything like that. It just say, I just want a patch on the left foot because it's in the left, left kidney. So only on the left foot. Not, not, no, both, both, no, not on both, and only once, one pack, once a week. Normally, I recommend people to do it every day, right? So the body will tell me it's only one pack, uh, once a week on left foot. So I asked the mom, why don't you do that for four weeks, only one pack, and see what will happen. So two weeks later, all the teeth came out. So what happened is that um, the mom having a mercury intoxication, in the, her mouth, pass it on to the baby, made it way to the kidney. In Chinese medicine, kidney control the bone, and so therefore, if the teeth cannot come out, the teeth cannot come out. Yeah, and so just by uh, releasing the toxins out, all the teeth came out. Um, another case: this woman, uh, she is a school director. She's already eight months pregnant, and her the baby is in the breech position. It doesn't turn. So she told me, she said that I have to go in today to the, the, the hospital um, uh, because they want to do a C-section on me here. And she started to have the dilating and having contraction. And so she said she just wanted to come in and see what I think. Everything else looks good but except that maybe that she had to, uh, to be scheduled for a C-section. So what I did is I take a look and see what are the most stressed organs here. And you can see here the adrenal is a stress, and beside the uterus is it as normal. And so the remedy that she wants, she wants a lot of energy, um, remedy for energy here. So I gave her what she needs. I also looked into her psyche and realized that she's totally overwhelmed with what's going on. She's very upset, and since she's a person that wants everything to be to go perfect, she's very much under stress. So that stress the body very much. So I started to give her the remedies, and then. By the time she gets to the hospital by uh, that same day at 2 o'clock, the baby has turned, and so they couldn't give her the C-section, they couldn't schedule a C-section, and, um, and the, the surgery was canceled. And she told me, she called me, and she said that um, um, she delivered a baby so fast, it's like a drive-through delivery, yeah. within an hour and a half, and, uh, and so uh, and it was very easy delivery. Um, another case I want to show here is uh, uh, this uh, former sumo wrestler from Japan. He came with diabetes um, and frequent di diarrhea. He hardly could stand up for a long period. So now look at all the symptoms, right? Here, uh, he's sleepy all the time, heavy bleeding when uh, he scratches uh, skin, saliva is water. And look at his HbA1c here. It's equal to it. It's very high blood sugar. Right, he's diabetes, but he does not want to be on insulin. And then I ask him, what is it that you eat? And he just like, look at me, smile, and he said, I have a gorgeous lunch every day. Look at what he eats. So all this, like sushi, tempura, 
Oily Chinese food, two glasses of beer, cake, ice cream, Diet Coke, no water, and you want to eat for two people, right? And dinner the same thing, look at that, eat pork rot, oily tuna, everything, he said, everything must be oily, oily beef, oily Chinese food, truffle, oyster, blowfish, and he start to like name all the food, right? A beer, 10 glasses of whiskey, Japanese shoju, ice cream, cake, pudding, and he must eat for two, so this is what he was eating. Wow. So I take a look at him. He found that he has a lot of parasite, salmonella is going on. Where it comes from, this is where the problem origin, origin and where most happening, yeast is happening, and so on. So these are the key remedies that tell me there's a lot of infection going on. And I start to look into uh, changing his food, his diet, find that he has food poisoning in here, and start to come up with a remedy that he needs. Again, I don't know the, the I don't know the um, the remedy, but this is what the body is informing me what it wants. So this is a just a couple of years, a couple months later. Um, he called me. Uh, I met him in Japan, and he said that his blood pressure is normal. He's no longer diabetic. So the reason I'm going to uh, I, I'm sharing this with you is that um, I spent 28 years really just sitting there. Um, making measurement to really prove can we communicate with the body and after 28 years of sitting with people like uh, eight hours a day with one person sometimes spend two days with one person I just sit and keep decoding and I can say at this point very comfortably your body is an intelligent system it can it will talk to you it tell you what it wants you can talk to it it will talk back you know, it's very coherent it's never all over, and you can communicate with it in details. It even tell you, uh, I don't know the person, but I can, I can decode the person's emotions. So um, it's absolutely an intelligent system, and you can talk to it. And so I use the technology to allow me to navigate what's going on. Uh, for example, when I was in Germany, they gave me all this light to help stimulate melatonin, for example, or serotonin, and different ways to help uh, treat inflammation and so on. And I just sit and I start to put it on the body and just see the, what does the body say to it? You know, can we really, um, can we really communicate with it? So, uh, so I spent 28 years and at this point, um, the, 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 the case study allowed me to uh, after 2,000 cases, I'm very comfortable to say that it's, you know, you could, you, uh, all of us, you, you all have the ability to tap into the body's intelligence and communicate with that. Uh, last case here I want to show you is uh, she's a, a student in chiropractic school. Um, her main complaint is that her, she has irregular period and she's unable to get pregnant for five years. Right? So I take a look at her and see what's going on and find out she has not only parasites and yeast and so on, here is remedy for parasite. So I told her, um, I told her that um, just give, uh, just the only thing is I asked that you please try not to get pregnant for three, at least give me three months, three to six months to take a look to don't get pregnant right away and see what we can do. So we find out that she has she inherits a condition from both mother and father here. So here, it the body say that um, the body is overloaded with parasite here, and also a lot of yeast going on. She has no energy here. So I just begin to give her what the body wants in in, in terms of minerals, vitamins, and so on, and gentle diet. And so she came in. Um, here on July 10, and her body is very toxic here. By the 13th, this is a month later, it started to look a little bit better, and five days later, she came back, and she said, Kimchi, I think I'm pregnant. I'm just like, whoa, this is only like four, four or five weeks. I'm still detoxing you. I don't think this can happen yet. Then I check, and I see number one come up, and one is, uh, means the fetus, right? So I see the presence of the energy of the fetus in here, and then I filter through ovaries or, or testes, and it's equal to testing that tell me that the, the energy is of a boy. So I, um, so I just leave it there, and I say, well, I'm not sure yet. I say, look, I, I need 
I need to see the pattern. I need to test you a few times to make sure. But she came back, and on September 2nd, the 25th, that number one is still there. It keeps testing its testes, right? And so um, I keep working on her. And uh, let's see it by uh, on April 20th, she did give a birth to a healthy baby boy. So all of this is just to show that the ability that we all have the ability to be able to tap in into the intelligence of the body, and that yes, um, uh, we can communicate with the body uh, to to technology. So is that good half hour? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, So if we have any questions for us, are we happy to answer? I try to move really fast, but we only have half hour. Yeah. <laughs> so do you, like, would I call you up and say, I want you to work on helping me to do my body? Would you do that, or do you just teach and... Does she take patients? Yes, that's yes, right. Yes. Yes, she I does. don't take patients, I take clients. Clients, yes. yeah, not yes. patients. Yes. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I just make measurements and collect data and I give you that data. Yes. Yeah. And then you can use that data with your doctors or whoever you're working with and I just give you the data. Uh, so, uh, in the previous two cases, one with the sumo wrestler and then one with the lady who wanted to get pregnant, I noticed that in both cases there were parasites you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So using your techniques and your expertise, how do you usually how do you find out that there are parasites, whether it be through consumption of food? Yeah. yeah. So how could you tell that there are these different kinds of parasites? Um, Here's my question, how can yeah. you tell? Okay, so um, you can always present information to the body by giving it different substances. For example, if you put in the substance that like penicillin, we know in, 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 in Western medicine, penicillin is for infection. If I present it to the body and the body goes toward it and say yes to it, and then I ask how many, if we would say I want 10 of that, so there is an infection at 10 times, so that means that's a lot. Right? So if your body says, I want it, but only one one, so the infection is not as much. You can put in a parasite remedy, you can put in anything, and let the body um, respond to it, right? Through the change in the current. And that's all I do. I measure the current, and if that has a match with the body, that it resonates with the body, and the body would react to it, because the body at the cellular level knows what's detrimental and what's beneficial for the body. The same way, you go out in the supermarket, you would go, I want this food, I don't want that food. In, in, even in the, in the party, you're like, I like this person, I don't like that person. You're already doing that. And that can be amplified through the technology to be able to read the body. And that's all I do. Is I just I have a direct phone line to the body and hear what's going on. So the same thing, you put in parasite remedy, if the body goes toward it, I just record data. That's all, all day long. And I just apply what the body is asking. And can she implant to do a demo afterwards, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. So why don't we do this? Why don't we take a few minutes break, grab some wine or whatever else you want to drink, and then uh, maybe we can start with the Q&A and uh, the demos uh, for both Rasmus and Kenchi, yeah? Super. Thank you. Thank you. So there's wine, there's the juices. Um, please help yourself. Yeah. 
about your measuring function. Do you want to talk about your measuring? So what do you want to do? You can, you can. Um, Does that show, uh, show the results? Or?
Okay, so far so good. Energy level is good. Immune system is good. Force is good. And we will see how toxic is the connective tissue. How burden is the connective tissue? How the traffic is flowing in the body? Are you able to absorb and detox? Right? 21, 19, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. You can see 15. So you a little moist, so the resistance is not very much. I can feel there's a difference. And like we can definitely demonstrate on someone that has more resistance. So something going on at 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So the level of toxicity, the connective tissue, could be a little bit better. I mean, you don't feel perfect, not ideal. So it's a little something going on, but not too bad. Mm -hmm. not like, but I've seen a lot more, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a lot more crazy uh, mm -hmm. things. So not too bad. Then you can determine where is it, where is it, what organ, right? And you mm -hmm. can go to all different organs. Is it in the liver? So I can, mm -hmm. I can. So for demo, we just play around. Mm -hmm. I can look to see what your body say is most stress organ. If something's going to happen, where would it happen? Right. So let's say most stress organ. I don't really know. So is that in the head? So I got the head, and then I have to say what part of the head. Mm -hmm. right? So most stress organ. So ostitis, jawbone teeth, very common in a lot of people. There's nothing, uh, this is common in a lot of people. Lymph node, right? Most stress. Thyroid, right? So I get the. So functionally, your body say I'm stressed there. It doesn't mean that um, because the number are low, so it doesn't mean like likely tomorrow you're gonna have something. But functionally, it already tell you that's where you have to look. Uh, uh, to to uh, that's what you can expect in the future. In, in all of those organs that you just mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, likely it will not happen until another few mm -hmm. years down the road. So it just give you a preview what oh, likely great. will happen if you, uh, if, uh, uh, for what reason I don't know yet, I'm just saying mm -hmm. right now that's what I get. Well, I, I am doing keto right now, when I know that like a keto diet okay. is, can be stressful on the thyroid. Okay, I, I don't know what, I just know that's that one, only yeah. one data point. And that's all I know at this point. And then you have to investigate further mm -hmm. why, for mm -hmm. what reason, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, so let's say thyroid, dermatitis, uh, is it chest, let's see. So I got the heart is stressed, let's see, myocardium, endocardium, pericardium. So different parts of the heart are involved. So now it starts to get my attention. Mm -hmm. So the thyroid are connecting with the heart, so I'm beginning to think, but that's all the information uh, I have right now, and I have to investigate further why, right? Mm. So right now, it say yes, likely down the road. Mm. I'm getting that it likely not nothing will happen until at least five years later. Mm. For where you are, five years down the road, if you continue the mm. same lifestyle, something will happen. Mm. Likely will develop something. For what reason, we don't know. I have to investigate further, and I keep linking the information. And whatever the remedy will move the number the most, mm -hmm. confirm what's going on, and how to change that. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, and I can keep going further. I can, I can look to see, is the, uh, the heart stress had to do with food, mm -hmm. right? We can just play around, right? And we can ask any kind of question. Well, how does, does it, is that relate to food, right? Let me see here. Here's food, right? Does it relate to alcohol? The, or the, the alcohol? I get a resistance, a no. No relationship, right? It doesn't go there. Mm. So I'm going to go here, egg. I get a yes or egg. Mm. OK, there's a relationship with egg. I'm going to go into further. Fish, egg. Eggs, fish, oh, egg. fish. Now, meat. So I'm looking for pattern. Mm. Is it meat? I'm checking all the meat. Chicken, veal, lamb, beef, pork, turkey, all right? I'm going into fish. I'm going to pick sardine because everyone tolerates sardine. But if your body say has a relationship with sardine 
and has a relationship with egg and begin to think, you probably consume too much animal protein and your body is not tolerating animal protein for the stress on the heart, mm -hmm. right? So the, I'm looking for patterns, mm -hmm. right? So right there, you pick egg, fish and meat, stress on the heart, hmm, I'm thinking, um, animal protein, you may not break it down, you may consume too much. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're eating, but this mm -hmm. is the information I guess. That sounds right. Right? Yeah. So confirming, if I give you an enzyme that to break down the protein, would it solve the problem? Mm -hmm. Would it make it less stress? If the body say yes, it confirms mm -hmm. yes. You don't have the enzyme. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. So animal protein here. I'm going to go in with um, animal protein. In here, in, in its leaves. Um, yeah. yeah, we have most stress organs. The body say, I am stressed at the thyroid and at the heart. I'm going to pick the heart to mm -hmm. throw them on stress. My heart has been, the past like week and a half, has been feeling like there's something going on. Yeah, because it involves the endocardium and pericardium. So that involves very deep already, right? So here's a heart, right? And someone to put in enzyme to break down protein, what would your body say to it? You know, I no longer get stress in the heart if I, in, I put in the enzyme for protein. And knowing that, so I can ask another question then. That just Find data. I'm going to do food allergy. Here's food. Food allergy to to what food? Let's just see. Here's food allergy. You have food allergy to egg. Yes. Why? Are, like, are you reacting? Does your body perceive I am reacting to egg? I got a yes. Hmm. Fish, yes. Meat, all type of fish and all type of meat. Hmm. So that, if you're not able to break down sardine, that means you're not tolerating protein. Because food allergy against sardine, putting the enzyme for protein, I no longer get food allergy. You don't have enough enzyme, or you've been consuming too much animal protein, it puts a stress on the heart. Hmm. So, that sounds, because I'm with keto diet, I'm eating a lot of protein and fat, yeah. mostly. Yeah, so, I, so it just tells me, I mean, yeah. you can go further and further, right, but right. just a quick few demos yeah. show you right away what's going on. So your body would benefit very much if you take some enzyme. What kind of enzyme? Enzyme, this is enzyme to break down protein. Can I get support. this at, oh, like I can just go to the health food store and oh, ask so, for yeah, enzyme? Yeah, the, the enzyme medica makes this one called immune support to break down protein. So that's, mm. And we can look for dosage, let's see how much mm. you want. Okay. Okay, if we can go into this effectivity, would your body say this is effective? Mm. Yes. Would it get to the root problem? Yes. yes. Can you tolerate it? Yes. Mm. Now we do capsules. So you, see, so you have this one here. Uh, here's two capsules. Here, huh. two, four, six, Eight, eight, that's a lot. So, uh, ten, that's a lot. You're not picking up with ten capsule, twelve. No, twelve doesn't work, but ten. Ten huh. is a correct per dosage day. per day. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so you may want to do that for me. Isn't it odd? Because I did the key to the diet too, and I got terrible heart disorder. Yeah, I was so convinced it's something good because I did everything. <coughs> right. It's great to lose fat, it's great for energy, but yeah. my body says keto, no way. Yeah, it's, and I was completely convinced it's good. This is my fourth week and I'm starting to wonder. I did this like two months. I was, my urine was deeply violent, you know, when you make Ooh. the stripes. Oh, wow. I was convinced it was. Oh, wow. I do everything in screen. I got heart disease disorder, my heart did not tolerate fat, fat, fat. Yeah. Meat, meat, meat. So, my question to you can just. You ask these questions now, but he's now on this keto diet, mm -hmm. eating a lot of protein, a lot of fat. If he would now say, well, keto is not mine, I, I figured out keto diet is not mine. The Swedish government even want to make it like a national program, everybody should be on keto. Yeah, and no, my question is, is it really that way? If he would now stop keto, must he continue taking these pills? That's my mm -hmm. question. If he would say now, Maybe it's not mine, this keto diet. Yeah, so I'm getting that. Uh, you want, your body say, use this 
maximum can capture rate only for four okay. weeks. It would take four okay. weeks, Three and that must be down right. for your body okay. to be not reacting. But if I, if I, what if I change my diet to, say, fully yeah. vegetarian starting tomorrow? Would, yeah. would that mean then the test would I need to be tested again, or does the body take like a longer time to adapt? So right now, at this moment, your body is overloaded with protein. I would highly recommend because it's safe. I'm allergic yeah. to it, so I'm reacting to it. So it would be a good idea for you only to go through the other yeah. food that your body tolerates. Right. And then you give it a break. Yeah. You can consume again in the future, yeah. but at this point, it's not a good idea because food's putting stress. I, mean, I literally feels like my heart is like saying like, hey, you're stressing me out, like I'm, at, I'm reaching a limit. Yeah. Like my partner. We can hook you up. We can yeah. see right away if you're going to Okay. Okay. Yeah, why not we do okay. it? Yeah, so that Thank makes you. sense? Totally. Yeah. Okay. Like, I was, I've been wondering, like, what's going on with my heart? Is this a good feeling or not? But, it, like, intuitively, it feels like it's not a good feeling. Uh -huh. you, yeah. like, you should not you should feel it. your heart. You should, when you're completely quiet, you feel your heart is fine. But when you lay in bed, especially when you lay on your chest, uh -huh. Face the pillow, and the heart is going to You really feel the heart. Like that's not supposed to be. The heart should be very calm, like the bell somewhere. So if you feel the heart to back, there, it's stress. Mm -hmm. Because I'm into this topic since. Mm -hmm. years. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. You can see that like, in between a few minutes, your body is communicating. I'm going to go get some of this tonight. <laughs> that's hard, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you. So, because I have been using one of these apps to measure HRV, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, we can maybe make several people with that. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> what do you think of that? There's this company that makes this green called Aura. Have you heard of that? Yes. Is that is that also kind of like kindergarten version, or is that better than? I don't know. I was looking at it. I'm very fascinated in it. Yeah. I don't know how accurate they are. Uh, was it like you a road break for the sixties? No. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It's a no. It's like a it's like a smartwatch, but it's a ring. It's amazing yeah. the technology. Amazing. Really? HRV and the ring. Yeah. I wanted to order it. I was a little reluctant. Mm -hmm. I will probably order it. It's, it's like two, three or four hundred dollars. Isn't it a little more? Well, if it's good.
my kids they use it in the morning and I have a daughter it's just much light do I need today hmm. and then she takes the pullover which calls it's just for fun but it's also a nice way to a little bit many times when I measure especially women and they wear like a yellow scarf it shows yellow because when you're very intuitive you take the color you need mm. color therapy so the, it shines red so oh, that's the answer that's the answer it's a light after you went all the chakra through it's red so red is the light you want to respond strongly so do you get red light bulbs no. 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 This is just a measurement. So that's ah. just the first step. I just want to see. Same. That's just. I want to see what light is good for you. Okay. So now the next step. What I'm doing now. When, when you say what light is good for me, so if I have like the Philips Hue light bulb at home, yeah. I would. Being red. in red would do what for me? It would, it would make my slower my. I stress. don't know what it would do. Huh. For me, it's like this. There is a law of resonance. You fell in love with this woman because probably she's the right one. If you have a table full of food and you're not completely ruined by commercial and you touch the burger or the, 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 the whatever, the chocolate bar, you would take probably the banana because you lack of magnesium or you take maybe the avocado because you need good oils or whatever. Mm -hmm. Which means you rest that kimchi set, you choose that what you need. Mm -hmm. The same is for me with light. This does not mean that red is better than yellow and green is not as good as blue or whatever. Red is the one you, your body reacts on. It's like a person, it can be the person. The resonance you have is the lady you fall in love, but also the teacher who completely makes you crazy. You both you have a topic, mm. you say term. Both is an issue, mm. which the body has to be solved. Mm -hmm. so the woman makes you maybe complete, and the doctor will solve, the, the, the teacher who made you crazy, maybe if you solve this problem, you solve mm. the problem that you have mm. this issue. So it's not about good or bad, it's just that this color red mm. would be now. Mm. So the next thing what I do, may I ask for your first name? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I write the name inside. Let's just see it. one second if the light. Okay, 
Now we have the heartbeat from downward translated into light. Mm -hmm. So if it shines yellow at the moment, it was just in dark. I put it on every second heartbeat. I can put every heartbeat or whatever. So his frequency here measured. And at the same time, below here, we just have to adjust it a little bit. We see it here the heart rate variability of W. Mm. Yes? And now, the power pointer is. Yeah. The moment he is focusing with his mind, the heart is closing. You see? The dots are all together. So I was looking at the light. Whatever you're Should focusing, I, I don't care. What if I close my eyes? Yeah, but the moment the mind is focusing, the heart closes. And I cannot say, dear Danny, open your heart. Mm -hmm. Then you go into your mind and say, what, uh, what should I do? Yes? The moment you use your senses, the word sensation derives from senses. The word present means being a now and present is the present, a given present. Very interesting the words come from. So the moment you start to listen, the heart will open up. And now we here have the stress level, we can go here and see sympathetic, parasympathetic, a little bit higher than parasympathetic, can measure all this data. That's not so important. Important is that he can experience his unique, we call it beauty, because he's alive, no matter how old, how healthy, how sick, in some of the color line. Now I have it here in this map. I can put it in the map of the entire building, the entire, entire state building, down in Times Square. Just awesome. The whole music comes from Denver. Imagine if we make this in Times Square, that would be. I would be the first one to get it. Connect. Okay. And now we just take heart. And his heart is playing this. Of course his heart is heart is not a heart. A heart. But the heart has been recorded and his heart is addressing the sound. This is every second heartbeat? No, just the lights every second heartbeat. Okay. Oh. But the music is every heartbeat? It's all the time, yes. But it, sometimes you address the heart and sometimes not. And the more related you get, the more rich the sound you get. That's all we're doing. So we just connect the person and he starts to listen to himself. As we said before, the word per person, we said it, comes from personare, it means you are sound, sound coming through. So Daniel is actually sound, we are all sound. Personare. The personare means sound going through. And it comes from Latin. And so which means that we are sound. And the oldest form of healing is always sound. What does every mother around the world do? No matter which culture, when the baby is sick, does she take the baby and hold it to her head? Or does she put it to her heart? Every mother has the baby here, not here. Maybe she must make a birth, we say, some milk, I'll just put it here. But if it's sick, we'll put it here. And what is the mother doing? She starts to hum. Mm -hmm. make, hey, maybe your mom too, you did that too. So what we're doing, we try to take the sound of Daniel, translate it into sound and color. I want to throw him into the ocean of his vibration. Because my approach is there's nothing better and more beautiful in the whole universe than him. That's why he is him and not him or him or her or me. Yes, he has to cure himself. And when I see now I'm talking very much, he's focused. But if he were to relay completely relaxed. It will change more and more at the heart of open back. I can show you why we hear it to Daniel a little bit. A lady during 15 minutes of treatment, how she has changed. Hmm. Like I've, I've used bio, was it biofeedback monitors, you know, it just has like a screeching sound. 
and it's not start, it's not relaxing. Yeah, bio, this is such a better. Uh, yeah, biofeedback. What is that's biofeedback? Better where does, yes, I know. But I just say, where does biofeedback start? I just want to show. You. This is a lady. You see the beginning here, quite stressful, sympathetic, very high stress level, high. And if I go through the time, even if you know nothing about HIV, you can see this is open, mm -hmm. this is closed during one treatment. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Of only 15 minutes? No, this is about 45, oh, 50 oh, minutes, oh, whatever. Oh, it's a long trip. I see. Yeah. And oh. just to show another guy here, just to, to compare him, this guy here, that's a guy that just put the resolution on the same, just that it's fair, of course, to be fair. Now he has the same resolution like this lady. This is his variability. Yes. And if you compare this two, and if you make an ACG of this two person, the AKG, the electrocardiograph, would say you are just the same, you're doing fine. Mm. This person up here that comes to storm, we call it the storm, let's say the flu, the cold, the infection, whatever, she can react on this. This guy is like an old tree in the forest, can stand there forever. If there comes a storm, it won't be so good. He cannot stand up again. Mm -hmm. That's the stress resilience, how you can adapt to it. Mm -hmm. And my target is my whole work here I'm doing. I just want to, to open the variability that Daniel's heart gets very big. He has a beautiful variability, that's great. And now we can go even further. You have to measure up the, all the way up and down. You have no heart risk disorder at all yet. I'm not allowed to diagnose it, but I can say you have now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we had one person, she got a stand the next day. So we saw how, how dramatic the situation is. Heart risk disorder, for example, can look like this. Then you get eyeless. Then it looks like you have the heartbeat and you have suddenly wow. extra hour. Mm. Yesterday we had a lady looking just like this. After 20 minutes, they were gone. We, I always emphasize we didn't heal her because otherwise I'm going to approach some to <laughs> I just say her body got in the relaxed relax state. I don't even know where it comes. Heart rhythm disorder, nutrition, lack of water, sugar is perfect to it, stress. Heart rhythm disorder is a cultural problem. So many people have it. I had it by myself. I had it twice in my life. Once I was training for a marathon, at the same time running two companies, having four kids at home. The other one was on ketosis. Mm -hmm. I did this so hard, my body says, my heart says, I cannot mm -hmm. deal with all these proteins and all this. So I was amazed that Kim just showed us. Mm -hmm. awesome. But what I want to show is that we can further make an entire report of you, because somebody asked me about heart math. Mm -hmm. you know, Daniel, all the sounds we make are recorded. You see here, Daniel, just from today here, the time. So I record here, Daniel, and I can take here the, the heart rate variability from him measured. Mm -hmm. This is an artifact, I just have to remove this. And now I take five minutes and I make a report, a five minutes report. Mm. And I can see quite a lot of this all this data. We don't have to go all through this data, but I'm teaching HRV all. Hmm. HRV can be very accurate. If you buy a cheap HRV um, download on your iPhone for five bucks, it will say your HRV is 75. 75 what? Bananas, eggs, total <laughs> energy, yeah. variability. Then how do you find it somewhere? Some programmers show what they have. I want to read. You see here suddenly how the parasympathetic becomes stronger. I'm just talking too much now. But if I see the total energy here is increasing, that's the black one, I can see it has an effect on me. I don't want to believe it. Mm. I want to see, do I do it? Black energy. Does it work? Mm. Well, let's go do something else. Mm. And as I told you, I had coma patients, all coma patients so far, they react all of them. And they don't understand what I'm saying. A dog doesn't understand what I'm saying. A pregnant woman, the baby does not understand. If I connect a pregnant woman, the baby normally starts to dance hmm. because it's so happy to hear the now. And yeah, that's what we're doing. So you can play anything actually. And my target is of course to increase you have beautiful variability. It's great. But normally we think until 25 it goes up and then it goes down in our life. No? Hmm. 30 we still now I made 40, I start already to wander. Um, it starts to edge a little bit with you know by yourself. 
The interesting thing is you can be 70 years old and have a variability like a 20 year old. I had a lady in Africa, in Namibia, a white lady, so not a lady working in the countryside. I can imagine it's easier, but just say let's... So even in our society, she had a total energy of 7,000. Daniel had just, I forgot, you can just see it once again, here. The total energy now, here in the evening, is 1,600. That's fine, that's good. Could be higher. She had 7,000? She had 10,000, so it was 70. You're not 70. <laughs> so, this is amazing. I had people with below 10. If it goes down to zero, we can turn off the lights. <laughs> yes? and, and this is just the point. But the interesting thing is, the heart wants to expand by itself. I had a guy, Kim Chen I, we know him, he had 20. After two weeks of treatment, he had 400. The heart wants to open by itself mm. again. That's my experience. And I've connected now, like Kim Chi, about 2,000 people with HRV. I just, last time I went through my data. I don't work, I have 28 years with it, I work now 10 years, but I can, I'm a little faster, but she works all day on one person, I can mm. have the HRV data in. Right. It takes a whole day to do all of the measurements? Oh, it just depends on how deep you want to go. Uh, yeah. so. so this is what we do, now make it a little more cool. soft, yeah. and I show you other sounds. You can play anything, you can play... This I like very much. This is a type of drum from Japan. <laughs> That's his car. And somebody asked me about breathing exercises before. The lady said, you know. I will start breathing exercises. I love all kinds of supplements. But supplement number one is air. We can live without water three days, without food a week. Without air, you make it three minutes, maybe four minutes. When we start to breathe right, with every breath we take, we change the pH. We are a sour society, we're always stressed, but our body is slightly alkaline. If we start to breathe right again, deep again, making breathing exercises, we can do so much. And this is what I, uh, we don't have time for this now. But I just want to say, this we can add on. And this here is Daniel playing the Sakurachi flute. <laughs> yeah, I've been a lot in Japan, this is my, this is why I like it so much, this I think. <laughs> and the beauty is you can combine it with anything. No matter if you take those supplements or you are on antibiotics or whatever you do, I don't want to recommend anything because that's not my expertise. I just want that the heart opens because we know the bigger the variability, the better. That's just it. And the beauty is in case of light, I can connect two people. Daniel can be connected with his wife and he can hold her light in his hands. It sounds so pathetic, but it's, sometimes it's, the kids get eyes like this. And where does healing start? No? What about entrainment? Like listening to, you know, there's this whole, you know, listening to music of different, the slow fedro rhythms or frequencies and rhythms. Yes. Does that actually work? Do you measure that? Every sound is an effect. Uh -huh. The thing is like this, to explain this if you're interested, my wife, for example, wrote her master degree in the Mozart effect. Children, how they react to Mozart in different kinds. And this has a huge effect. But we have one problem. If one feels very sick, and I say to them, he's not fine, but imagine he would be sick and everything. I would say, listen how beautiful Mozart is. We have two problems. One is duality, which means Mozart is beautiful. I tell him how beautiful is the sunrise, listen to the birds. And he would say, well, I just got my heavy diagnosis get rid of all that. If I can show even a person, no matter what diagnosis he has or she has, how unique, beautiful they are, mm -hmm. I dissolve to duality. It's not polarity. Polarity is something else. Polarity is man, woman, or something of all. It's a duality. The other thing is the entrainment. If you listen to a waltz, you know a waltz, mm -hmm. that's a waltz, 
you have to adapt to it. If I take your frequency, you don't have to adapt to it because it's you already. Right. You jump over this entrainment thing. Right. And that's the point. And mm -hmm. I think, of course, listen to Mozart. If you listen to Tech, if you Google techno music, you will find young people with heart attack. Mm -hmm. Start Googling this. Techno music is not a bad music, it just kills you. You just get heart attack. How about, I think they are rap. You know, I hear well, rap and it's like... Yeah, but if the rhythm is made by a drummer, it's fine. If you listen to Elvis Presley, you will see he's out of the rhythm all the time. If a machine makes the rhythm, bum, 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 it's heart attack music. Because, mm. you know maybe Eckhart Tolle, he's a very mm. nice philosopher. He says, in a situation you have three possibilities. Accept it, change it, or leave it. When you're exposed to sound, you have three options. Listen to it, listen to it change it, or leave it. When the smoke detector starts on ringing, you can you have three options. Either you run out, you change it, or you accept it. You cannot say, no, I don't care. <laughs> because sound will always move you. And now it's the question what sound we use. In military, they abuse sound, of course, but the soldier don't think. Um, and if you take now beautiful music, no matter which culture, if it's a beautiful music, the drummer, I can play the hard drum of the native Indian of America. Here. I don't play it, you play it. So I take here the hard drum, like, like in the sun dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the, actually, this drum is recorded. It's really from this drum, mm -hmm. but it's drummed by his heart. We emphasize the force. That's normally when you have this person force a number of time to dance in this person. He can sing overtones. And now you can see here how he's playing. It's not that I invented this here. If you go here to whatever, you see here the heart. It's easy that we all of us now start drumming together. If we all of us start playing violin together, we must be good playing yeah. violin. Otherwise, it will hurt. Mm -hmm. it, believe me, I played in an orchestra, four people playing, I was a young kid. If you don't listen to each other, it's torture. Mm -hmm. This is not beauty. But if he plays nice and you listen to it, it can be so beautiful. Like before I showed mother with daughter. No? Mm -hmm. And do people respond uh, differently? Like, like, I may have a preference for one sound, and will that increase my heart rate? Yes. But I'm not interested in what you say. I'm interested in what your heart has. Yeah. Because your mind can say to me, I want to have violin because my grandfather was so beautiful thing. But my heart might prefer... No, let's say your body. Yeah. If I see your body opens like that, that's what I want. Right. What? I want to have and I want to get you relaxed. I don't want to entertain you. If I want to entertain you, we can hear whatever, the news. So, yet, you would say this is not what you want to hear now. Because he has to let go. And violin normally I use first when he is completely relaxed, normally snoring already, or sleeping. Hmm. During a lecture playing violin, this hurts my ears. There are no harmonics there. But it's okay, of course.
by the heart you cannot do so much wrong. Mm -hmm. But that's how we start doing. And then we have heart harmonic, we call it. So I can connect Daniel with whatever, his best friend, or with his dog, or with his mom, or with his wife, or whatever, <coughs> and give both two <coughs> instruments and you start to play together. Ah, so there's a coherent. Or yeah. A, uh, yeah, you get coherent. Yeah. One by two people go to sync. Sort of. Yeah, coherence means that you dance with your partner, she reacts on you and you react on her. Mm -hmm. You get coherent. One vibration react on the other. So this is what we are doing. Um, mm -hmm. And as I said, in case of architecture, I think it maybe could be something nice. I don't know how to apply it yet. But because it requires the sensors, right? Like yeah. Accurate. Yeah, but what we can do also, I, my grandmother passed away two weeks ago. I can play her light and her sound again. Mm. So in therapy cases, if you come to me and you get, I don't make therapy because therapy requires a problem. I make an encounter of your uniqueness, so I call it, because I'm not interested in your problem, because I'm not that I'm not interested, but I'm not the expert. Right. I cannot help you with headache. I'm not either. I just want that you get very good. Maybe the headache goes away, or maybe your depression, or maybe whatever. Or maybe the headache still starts to work. We know today the bigger the variability, the better whatever problem you have. But what I can do, I can take you now the recording of him, give him the recording home, and if he has a device, he could just make the whole room listen to the sound and listening and experience the color. Mm. That's possible. Yes. And you don't need any person. Mm. Yes. Okay. So you can make this app allows you to make like an MP3 or whatever, a sound file from Yeah. The yeah, this is possible. Uh, yes. <coughs> because this software here to play this, I can give you for free. Right. This is this is simple. And then you have the player and you have uh, your file and you have the Wow. That's possible. So I have a question. So if people and then they're coming to you for whether it be like a session, you know, or, uh, like, so my question is how could other um, uh, people in this like uh, expertise, like, whether it be like sound meditation practitioners or people who do music therapy, mm -hmm. could use this as a tool mm -hmm. to help others? So how could this be like a uh, user tool? Yeah, that's the funny thing. I launched in 2011. Okay. I have a dentist in Switzerland. When you go to the dentist, instead of reading the news, you have half an hour relaxing. And he has, he's happy that his patient come relaxed and not like this, please help me. Mm -hmm. I have a fertility clinic close to Munich. It's not a fertility clinic. It's a doctor specialized in her topic of fertility. It's not like a big fertility clinic. Mm -hmm. And the women, Come there, instead of sitting in the waiting room, reading whatever yeah. newspaper, they get relaxed. And I have an mm -hmm. osteopath working with it, I have an oncologist working with it. It is just that you get in a relaxed state. I have a psychiatrist working with it after the treatment, instead of being sent home right away, you relax half an hour and not just let everything set. So, so you're, you're saying that, like, right, so at this, each of these locations, they have a bunch of these devices and they hook each patient up yes. and able to with headphones or something as a way that uh, that's what we do. So we but, uh, so, so could it be used at like home or could, could it be used at home or could it be more for half of the people or is it more for medical no. like, as possible? Half of the people I train are retired practitioners. Okay. But I have also many private persons because you don't it's you don't need to have a medical license. So I have for example I can tell so many stories, but um, I have several old people, they have, they want to get older, <laughs> because the better the variability, the better you can adapt to it. And instead of buying themselves whatever, uh, a second whatever, big flat screen TV, they get trained, I train them individually, and they start doing this. Mm -hmm. I have a 70 year old lady, she got it for herself, she started to help the person around again. Yeah. She's not a therapist, but she makes tough people around. So we have people in all kinds of fields. I just trained last day, now two days ago, um, different people, practitioner, but also people working. Do you train in, in person or do you have like online course? Or so far I do it always in person. Always in person, okay. Where are you I'm in Austria. <coughs> I fly now 
to, in one month I fly to Japan, I've just been in Poland, I go all over, and I can also do it online. Okay. Yes, do we have time for another? Yeah, yes, yeah. 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 I'd love to go. Thank you. Just what is the, is there a typical like, duration of, of this uh, treatment of this new bad cell that If you make a good treatment, you can do it. Well, this is like a Oh, and I have one more question. Yes. So, do you know how you said um, music or rhythm made by robots? It's like heart attack music. Yeah. But well, could you be more specific about that? Because you know, like I make music, I produce music, you know. Uh, yes. But like, for example, a lot of like dolls, you know, uh, desktop audio workstation are kind of in a way robots, computers are robots. But you know, we use samples that are not necessarily I mean, organic from a few recorded samples. Right, but I mean, still you're using robot yes. as a tool to yeah. create music that is well received. There, there are many things. So, I don't know. Yeah, general spoken, if a machine makes the rhythm, uh, which most players do today, right. I would call it half attack music. Really? Yes. Re regardless of the rhythm? No. Because some rhythm, like 120, yeah. is much worse than you take another rhythm. Some yeah. rhythm are really not good. Yeah. So yes. you're saying like all house music or most like dance music? Well, it depends yeah. how strong they are yeah. also. If you go to a techno party, yeah. a rave concert, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. You can hardly escape from it. The less you can escape from it, the worse it is. Because you have entrainment means you're exposed to a wave and you get adapted to it. If you hear the walls, you cannot dance rock and roll to it. Mm -hmm. right. You can't. Well, it's in a different kind of signature. Because okay. the rhythm is different. Right. You can't. You have to adapt because the, the CD player won't change. You have to adapt to it. Right. Now the question is, of course, how are you? In a rave concept, we have a big problem. The, the young people, they are completely dehydrated, not drinking for a whole night with all their drugs. They are completely weak. And then they pass out. If you're completely healthy, eating good, whatever, this will, won't be that bad. It's like a mobile phone. I have a mobile phone here. I love my mobile phone. It's great. I have, it's my whole office. But if I give 10 hours lecture and maybe have had been drinking with my friends day before, after before, and I'm completely exhausted, and then I have to talk one hour on the phone, it's like somebody pressed my head down. Mm -hmm. Everybody was a little sensitive. Mm -hmm feel that the cellular phone is pure stress. If I'm strong, sweat blood, drink a lot of water, it hardly affects me so bad. This is a little bit also we have to think about it. But if you hear techno music all the time, if you're exposed, you have five hours in your house, now the 5G is coming. Mm -hmm. The 5G is going to be a hot topic. The 5G is so strong. Why do we need to stream like in Japan, they have the 8K video, not 4K, 8K. Imagine you have 8K YouTube video on your little, you cannot even see the difference, 4K, 8K, it's stupid. You get so much data, this is so much techno music. If you feel sick, you have a flu, try this, don't believe me. If you have a flu, you feel really bad, just one day. You take a laptop and stream one or two YouTube videos. Or see how you feel after. The after you feel much worse because it's such a stress. My children at house, we have all the smart cables, mm. old fashioned. Mm -hmm. I tell them don't stream. You need no Wi Fi. Anymore. No, we have Wi Fi. Of course, it, works. it doesn't matter if you check the WhatsApp, it's a little amount of information. But if you stream a 4K video, don't use Wi Fi. Mm. I thought you were saying that the 5G, like having the 5G is better. Yeah, but the 5G, the problem is the moment you get connected, you get the information to you, you're much more stressed. If he calls on his phone, it hardly bothers me. But if I have the phone next to my ear, I just speak in speaker mode with my phone on my platform. I never put it Which is also approximately like a, an, an act 
active for a not enough of a resting rate, but it's closer to like a normal So, like, someone who's a journalist was writing about it. The sort of soul thing to have that feel. It's, it's all about that. You know, where it beats per minute. Whereas, you know, like Acid House, or like Gabber, I think about the laws of the use for me to track that. Yeah, I guess it makes sense. It's just like that easy on the part as we listen to the cost of four to the four. Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on, it depends on how fast it is. Right? It's just so good. 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 It's fine for you, everybody see your heart? Yeah, it's fine. S H A H A A M I M I We Austrians and German always mix I and E. Because an E in German in English is an I in the English sense for us. Shamir? E R. Yes. Like this? No, this one. No. I E I E R. R. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Just relax. Try not to put too much um, control of your stomach because it interferes more. And that's all you have to do. And then keep on beating with your heart. Okay. I'm just making stupid jokes. That's in my head. Okay. What should we? Do? What do you want to hear? Should we start with the heart too? Normally I start with heart. You okay. can start with drum too, but. Well, Big, 
Why? What's that? What's that? Why? Uh, these are artifacts. Right? This is to show it. This is because you moved it. Yeah. Yeah. This ruins oh, my oh, data oh, here, oh. and then I have to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. I can clean them. Clean means it takes the artifacts of the But you play amazingly back. Beautiful. I had a guy, old, very unattractive guy. He played overtones. I was, I was always crying. Hmm. It was so beautiful. Hmm. But he was not attractive. Hmm. So that's the beauty. Everybody's beautiful. It's no matter. Okay. Yeah. So if I see that you have great variability, awesome. Well, you can open them. Yeah. 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 Um, it feels good to hear the feedback. You know, the dots. But um, the the overtone in like sounds, sounds like the music that I overtones. Okay. So I'm wondering if there's an influence. But you but you were saying you like that though. You like when. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was. But you play amazing album John, it's very nice, it's very unique, it's very good. I have tested many, especially myself, I never played much. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now, now that like, I'm a little bit more relaxed, is it the end of the Yeah. Well, the thing is like this, it's this wrist here is the short time where it's adaptation. <laughs> this is the long time. The wider this is, the better. The smaller this is, the more it's Oh, okay. So this is very good. The data itself, if they want to see how the data really are, I have to go here, some of the recordings, I go here, and I open this. This here, you have, for example, you breathe beautifully. You breathe much better than this time. <laughs> no, because every breath you take, you have, you have, you have, you have, a, you have a body of a sports lady. From the heart, from the condition, no. The HRV was designed in Russia in the 60s, 70 years ago, 76 years ago, to distinguish if he or she we should train for Olympia. You have both the same skills. Mm -hmm. But if she would bring much bigger HRV ratio, mm -hmm. we would put we would bet on her. Mm -hmm. Because she will make the last 10 meters faster. Right. I'm not, I'm just making a little joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the point. It's, it's yeah. nothing about it. That's one of the... So, so my money is well spent. So. But I, I want just to show... Do you see here some samples? I have your samples. How, how long have you been doing yoga? Um, six months. Oh, okay. You see this guy, for example, he cannot breathe at all. Here this one is an emergency <laughs> breath. Like, <laughs> This guy here, he got the Olympia number three, he got by Spike inside the Here, here. So this guy breathes beautiful. You see how he can breathe? Wow. Every breath he takes goes sympathetic, parasympathetic, sympathetic, parasympathetic. When he breathes in, sympathetic, parasympathetic. You said he's a Olympian athlete. Yeah, he's a wow. Swiss Olympian athlete. This guy here, he can hardly breathe. Mm. <laughs> Let's look to Shamir. She breathes beautifully. Mm. This is artifacts because she cannot sit quietly. <laughs> that's fine too. But no, I'm just kidding. But it's really good. This is really nice. And when I make an HRV of your head, you have a total energy of 6,000. Wow. That means a lot. A lot. <laughs> and a young people up to 45 should have. Three, four thousand, two thousand, three thousand is more. Wow. She six thousand. Wow. I have people below ten. That's a ten. ten. Just two, two digits. Yeah. She six thousand. You were my thousand. I was fifteen hundred. So she's she's very good, very big. Maybe if I edit it a little longer, maybe it goes down to five thousand. But she's amazing. Big variability. This, this whole set I was reading was saying that like long distance runners and, and people who do yoga have like higher heart rate variability. If you do it right. I gave a lecture in a five star spa and I connected the guy like here. And I asked him during the lecture, what are you doing? He said, I'm the yoga instructor of the spa. He had the variability of a stress manager after burnout. 
he is not a good yoga instructor. He's <laughs> He does not know what yoga is. Right, right. Or, <laughs> or maybe it's another reason. Maybe yeah. he just got divorced yeah. and got bankrupt and yeah. it's his favorite cat is going. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But the heart was not like yoga. Right. That's okay. There can be other reasons also. Mm. But the thing is also we have to have, many people tell to me what they have to do. <laughs> <laughs> If I connect someone with very little variability, they say, well, yesterday I had so much stress. Your heart is a muscle. If you think like a stick, you don't go one weekend to the gym to be under stress. You train for years. If somebody has a beautiful variability, she can now get drunk, have an A, and do all night or whatever she wants. Mm -hmm. Next day, maybe she will be down at 2,000. Mm -hmm. If the car, if both of us are a bit similar. Mm -hmm. If we drink all night, we will be down by 300. Mm -hmm. so we will all of three of us will be completely exhausted and not just eat. But it's like this. If somebody has over years, the one of the worst guy I ever measured is this here, for example, here. This, yes. He has here, if you if I make this bigger, mm -hmm. his total energy is around 20, then like so. Wow. 18. Yes. Wow. Yeah? He can be completely relaxed. Everything, well, he has a calm pulse of 108. That's a hummingbird. That's normal. That's very nice. All the way through. But I have another guy here. He has, a, for example, this guy here. Uh, this guy has. He has a nice, wonderful pulse from 66. You see here, mm -hmm. nice pulse. What is total energy? 128. Mm -hmm. If you go back to Shamir, if I find her, here she is. She has a pulse of 88. Mm -hmm. Maybe because we're all watching her hard now. Mm -hmm. That's fine too. But her total energy is much much higher. Mm -hmm. But what I want to say is just everybody, even if as long as the heart beats, you can do amazing. But if you remember my lecture before, it was very short, but one of the most important slides is this one here. The moment you focus, the moment Shamir is focusing, mm -hmm. her heart is closing. Mm -hmm. You saw this a little bit? Mm -hmm. The moment she was laughing, it was exploding. Mm -hmm. The moment you use your senses, you get present, you listen to yourself, you just, the heart wants to open by itself. Mm -hmm. And then healing takes place. And I just want to facilitate the healing process, whatever it is, whatever remedy you got from kimchi or from your MD or whatever. Are you saying focus is bad? <laughs> if you build a house, you're an architect maybe, you should not be completely stoned and say, peace, well, I don't care. Exactly. It's not going to get things done from focus. The problem is just don't be on focus 24 hours. Uh -huh. You also have to let go. Uh -huh. You have to be in focus to find maybe the right remedy, to find the right MD and go to the right doctor and not go to the whatever in the wrong place. But when you have found it, I mean, it's like maybe when you're an architect, you have to be very accurate, find everything accurate. But maybe to get the inspiration for this beautiful house, maybe you have to go relax through the forest and let go. To get the healing process, you have to let go. Focus is of course important. It's like yin and yang. Sympathetic state is important. It's, you have to go to the gym to get muscles. But if you don't relax, you will burn out in the gym. The problem in our society, we are a sympathetic stress society. Fighting, 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 fighting. And they're wondering about burnout, depression, and cancer, heart attack, stroke. These are cultural diseases. Stupid diseases increasing exponentially. The medicine can do it. So, it's not focus, it's bad. Our whole medicine is focusing. But it's not solving the problem. The cancer rate is going up. So, I think we have to add something. The problem is, if you get a heavy diagnosis, what are you doing? You are focusing on the diagnosis. No? Why me? Why here? Why how long? So, it closes even more. How should the therapy, whatever you do, work? Do you understand what my point? Mm -hmm. If anybody knows to focus on my breath, it's like meditation, what would happen? Yeah, but for breath, it's for example beautiful not to be 
because a different press. You can control it or you can be aware of it. Mm -hmm. That's two different things. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of breathing meditation. It's nothing better. It's beautiful. Right. But do it. When you do it right, you feel your body. You feel how it changes. Yeah. You feel how the cortisol and adrenaline and the noradrenaline and everything starts to feel. It's less than that's likely. Yeah. It's more about the whole, whole exactly. Exactly. Well, I, like, like, like in Zen, like the instruction is to follow the breath. Which is not Beautiful. to force, like, exactly. I'm now inhaling, I'm now exhaling. That's, that's focus and that's bad because you're, you're repressing. But if you just allow yourself to breathe naturally and you then follow the inhale and follow the exhale, Beautiful. then that's, a, that's where the openness happens. Follow yeah. versus focus. I, mean, I, just, I was doing it wrong for years until like, my teacher found me. It's like, it's like, we need follow, like, we really need, like, don't force it. Right. It was such a huge one. Why did you tell me that? Three years ago. What about the instructor tells you to breathe in deeply and exhale deeply? Isn't that forcing? But I think that's more like in yoga that we can make sure that's strong. Like Vipassana style of course, it's just deeply, 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 Same wife, the kids are all different. Yes. So, which means life expresses itself in variability. What we humans do, we make this cloning really stupid. We make the forest for one pine trees next to the other. They will just get sick. This here, if the heart has a rhythm like this, you have no variability, you have no stress resilience, you will just become the flu and you will pass out. Mm -hmm. This is proof medically, the more variable. And if you understand entrainment, if you listen to techno music, you're talking about all this. I don't want to say it's bad, but if you are exposed to always the same rhythm, your body doesn't want it. Because life is not repeating, life is new with everything. If we make now, and if you're exposed to music, which is always the same, it stresses you. Of course, if you're tired, maybe it's good to hear a little bit stressful. But if you keep on doing this, you go in the sympathetic state and you burn out. So the techno music from a machine, if you go to an Indian tribe and record them, the rhythm, and put it under a computer and see the rhythm, you will see they are out of rhythm all the time. 
not of course completely unfruitful, but if you listen to Elvis Presley singing with his guitar, it's never exact. It's never exact. Yeah. It's never exact. Yeah. It's yeah. The but you're saying something like incandescent bulb has variability. It's like a, 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 a tungsten bulb or halogen light has variability, whereas the problem is that LED is too consistent. And here yeah, I think the danger of LED is the pulsation. A halogen light is not pulsating. It's pulsating. Oh, LEDs pulsing, like so, CFL. Yeah. So what light do you recommend having? Like this one. If we just go to the store, <laughs> what could we what should we get? Uh, very difficult. I think the old light bulb, which is burning, it's set in New York in the fire department since 120 years. Is that true? You heard the story? There's a light bulb which should be burning since never. Maybe it's just a fairy tale. But just the old light bulb, which they took out of our market. Mm -hmm. That's much better than the light spectrum, mm -hmm. and it's less stressful. The old light bulbs? Just the way you have this. Oh, I think that's what I use. Yeah. Like the 60 watt? Yeah, whatever, like whatever, that? whatever. Okay. But in the future, they won't be there anymore. And I think the technique has to go on, because they use so much electricity, they mainly produce heat. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, of course, if the whole world should be illuminated, we need other. And the LED is, of course, great. but. We have here technology, when it's pulsing, it's not like two wheels, it's closing the poles. This is why our light is like this. This is the lamp. This lamp and this lamp is just like this. It's not closing anymore. But is it LED? It's LED here inside. But it has what, two LEDs? No, it's just, the rhythm goes just hand in hand and it's the other and it takes the pulsation. So you design, I see, so you can design out. The, yeah. I see what you're saying. Oh, this I didn't do a part of mine. Yeah, I have several partners. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. This, this is just. Uh, yes, this is just. Uh, I can show it here. Yeah, this comes here again. You see here, I put a normal LED here next to it. This is just a very unprofessional recording from mine. <laughs> but you see here, I put this device. Mm. You see how it starts flickering? Mm. Yes. Mm. So, so that's a conventional. Yeah. That's a that's it. If I put this here, it's completely closed. That's just a little bit of saying that you can form your own board for a drink. Or you can put this on the table, and while I talk with my kids, my talk is the same. Right. Responds to this. And I can also put it here. And then all the sounds here in my room at the moment are translated directly to the light. Based on sound for two words. So you can connect here any sounds to the same. I was trying to do it. Just relax. And the heart is working with some 
have mm. a hard time because they interact with other mm. people. But yeah, then the I cannot say, oh, I feel mm. you're a hot sensitive tissue kind of mm. that mm. But if we play, I do recommend right away because mm -hmm. music is so strong. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, music is, mm -hmm. as you know, mm -hmm. can be very hard. So, yeah, the people, there are many options. I train this, I have this now, I train places, and I don't have any architects in it. I mean, this is the thing, like, we're right now, one of the things that I'm involved in is brainstorming different things to do in Times Square with the Times Square Alliance. And, like, they have this midnight moment thing, which is kind of bullshit, but it's only for two minutes. But you could, you know, today, imagine you have a place, you, you attach this somewhere. Yeah. The moment a person comes by, touches this, the whole Times Square shows the music and the light.